Over the last few months, I've had several guys on different forums ask me what I thought about loading with a 550B Dillon press. I've been using it now for 15 years, a little less maybe. I produce all, everything I load, I produce on my Dillon 550. I do have an old Junior that I bought about 45 years ago. I keep it for just forming, bullet pulling, and just everyday sizing a piece of brass to see how it's sized. I do all of my reloading, everything I do on my Dillon 550B using what I call new used brass. What is new used brass? It's brass that I've done everything to and I'm ready to load it like a new one. I have annealed it if it was needed, sized it, cleaned it in stainless steel media, cleaned the primer pocket if it needed it. Most of the time in stainless steel it doesn't. Trim it the length I trim it to the trim length once and then I let it grow to the max length. Once it hits trim length or the max length, then I trim it to trim length. So I can usually go two or three firings before a case needs to be trimmed back to the trim length. By doing that, when I go into my Dillon, all I'm doing putting primers in it. Loading the powder, loading the bullet, complete it around. I'm not banging around a lot with a 550. You can load straight through with a Dillon 1050. I've loaded many thousands of rounds, but you're talking about a massive press that is bolted down to a very sturdy bench and it don't shake around like this one will. When you shake around, that can change your powder dispensing by one or two tenths. Even though I've I've did it on purpose, and we're only talking 30 to maybe 50 feet per second difference at 100 yards. I doubt you'll see a sixteenth of a difference in the in the actual size of the group and at 250 yards or 300 yards we shoot prey dogs with there's too many other variables in there so one little bit of difference in one or two tenths of powder won't really make a difference to my kind of shooting I shoot 300 rounds plus in the summertime all the time sometimes 500 round plus. I'm not looking for minute of angle even though almost all of my rifles will shoot minute of angle. Most of them shoot under a half inch. More than good enough to shoot prey dogs with. All I am worried about is not minute of angle but what I say is MOPD. Minute of prey dog. As long as I can hit a prey dog two, three hundred yards and in, I'm happy. I miss. Not often, but I do miss. I just put another round in and shoot it again. What is the concept with the 550B as far as reloading? 550B uses a tool head. That tool head has a powder die on it. Powder funnel fits in the powder die which the powder measure fits on to get your load. What's nice about the 550B and the tool head concept 
One tool head can be used for more than one caliber. This particular tool head is, is my 223 Remington tool head. I've got it marked 223 Remington slash improved. That means I can use it for my 223 AI, my 20 practical, and my 6x45 because they're all based on 223 case. When I get my cases, I usually buy them at the gun show from people that work at different ranges, so I get all varieties of cases. Some once fired, some many fired, and I have to go through and sort them out, but usually I pay anywhere four to seven cents a piece for them. The first thing I do with one of those cases, usually a 223 Remington, I'll small base size that, then I will anneal, clean the cases in stainless steel media, then I'll prep by means of prepping, I'll take the cases to the trim two length, the shortest length. And once I've got that done, inside, outside, deburge, chaffering, I've got basically, again, what I call my new used brass. I can turn that into whatever I want. If I want 20 practicals by using a couple uh, different die setups, I can make that 223 into a 20 practical which is nothing more than a standard 223 neck down to 20 caliber. By using the Redding bushing dies, I can change the bushings to get my necks down to the 20 caliber. On the other hand, if I want to take that same piece of 223 Remington, I can turn it into a 6x45. A 6x45 is nothing more and a 223 Remington necked up to 6 millimeter. It's a very good wind cartridge. It's very easy to make, again, using the Redding die setups with the bushings. From that point, I can use the same tool head because the powder die is set up to the length of the cartridge. All of those cases are 1750 is the trim length. So I can set the die up to that trim length. By demonstrating here with a 20 Vartard, I can put a, uh, put a case in. There's no powder in. I have no primer set right now. I run the case up until I get a full drop. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for this to be flat with the housing of the powder measure. I can do the same thing with any one of the four cases 223 Remington, 223 AI, 6x45 or 20 practical using one tool head. I load 16 calibers using nine tool heads. One tool head can be multiple use. I use one tool head for 223K Hornet, which is the same, I use the same tool head for 222 Hornet. They're both the same family, just a different design of the case. Today, I'm finishing up some 20 Vartards. I made these cases from 223s. They all happen to be Winchester because I bought them that way from a guy that supposedly got them from a range. I made them with the directions that I did in Varma Hunter Magazine issue 90. I think it was page 139. 
I went through the steps to make 20 Vartart. 20 Vartart is nothing more than a 221 Farball neck to 20 caliber. I'm using a 221 Farball tool head because the powder die is already set up for the correct length. I can also use this tool head not only for the 20 Vartard and the 221 Farball, but I can also use it for my 17 Remington Farball just by changing the powder funnel. 17, 20, or 22 according to which one I'm, I'm dealing with at the time. The dealing is a simple process. You just want to do everything steadily as you go. I've already checked my powder level. I'm at 20.5 attack using a 32 Butts King 20 cal bullet. Each time I look into my case, I can see my powder level. It's going to approximately stay the same place every time. The 550B, you have to index it yourself. I've used a Friends 650 XL. It's a bigger setup. My thinking it's more for the pistol shooter. It's got the feed. You can do massive amounts of reloading pistol ammunition pretty quick with that system. I have loaded many 9mm 40s, 45s with my 550B. It's not as fast. And the 550B in Dylan's documentation says you can load five to 600 rounds an hour. My guess that is with brand new brass, one guy just pulling the handle, and another guy keeping the powder full and the primers full to do five, six hundred rounds an hour. I can average 300 plus an hour, and I'm happy with that. I can load a lot of ammunition in one evening. I don't load eight, nine, twelve hundred rounds. I'll load three or four hundred rounds and do something else. Maybe label my boxes. Then I load another two or three hundred rounds. So by having a progressive press and doing the same motions each time, the Dillon powder measure stays within a tenth of a grain. Most of the time I check it, it's right on. It's fairly easy process. Once you get your die on and set to the length, you just keep moving right on. You can feel how the pressure on the primer goes in. If it goes in way too easy, 
that primer pocket is probably enlarged and you need to get rid of that case because if you don't it's going to blow the primer out the next time you fire that case. I load 10,000 rounds probably a year. It's easily done with the 550B by Dillon.